Whether you're new to homeschooling or you've been around the block a while and you're just trying to get a refresher or maybe you're looking for something new to do with your school year next year, this is the time of year that I always like to stop and pause and consider all the different ways to homeschool your kids. Stick around. I think you're going to be encouraged. Well, it's almost April. And usually homeschool moms, by the time we get around to April, they're either the plan is working or the plan is not working. And if you're in the plan is not working category, or maybe you're just curious about a different way to homeschool your kids, I thought I'd give you guys some insight into the scene, the things that we have done over the past 20 some odd years in homeschooling our kids, kind of what worked, what didn't work, and give you a little bit of an idea of all the different kinds of homeschooling options that are available to you some of which I really love and some that I don't. Uh, Also, I want to direct you to the Homeschool Legal Defense Association. If you've never uh, been to that website, that is a fantastic place to start when you're considering homeschooling, everything you need to know about the laws in your state. They vary from state to state, but I'm here to remind you that homeschooling is legal in all 50 states and to continue just to urge you to stay away from these voucher programs, from school choice programs for homeschoolers. I wanted to let you know what happened in Utah the other day because I think it bears repeating. KUTV out of Salt Lake City had a headline that caught my attention last week. This is it. Utah's voucher law raises concerns over lack of oversight in homeschooling. Guys, this is exactly what I was telling you was going to happen if we decide to go ahead and let the government into homeschooling. The very first thing they're going to do is start crying out for more regulation and whining like a bunch of spoiled brats. That's exactly where we're headed. Listen to how this article starts. Could Utah's new school voucher law lead to the distribution of neo-Nazi propaganda in homeschooling groups? This is the question on the minds of some parents who are concerned about the state's oversight of homeschooling. Earlier this year, it was discovered that a private homeschool group in Ohio, Dissident Homeschool, which you guys far-right, wackadoo, weirdos, whatever, distributing neo-Nazi, white supremacist, pro-Hitler lesson plans to over 2,400 members. While Ohio condemned the teachings, they found little in state law to stop it. Okay, full stop. Can I just ask a very obvious question right now? Why are we not going after the people who are blatantly and in your face mutilating children in the name of a lie? But you want to paint the entire homeschool world because of one weird, radical offshoot in uh, in Ohio called dissident homeschool. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, parents like Anna Green are worried that Utah's existing homeschool laws and the brand new voucher program could be open to something similar. If you wanted to open a school teaching Hitler's ideology, you could do that and you could use voucher money to do it, she said. According to Crisis in the Classroom, the state's oversight of homeschooling is deliberately limited. The new voucher law says the state has no right to, quote, affect the freedom of choice of a homeschooled student, including regulating curriculum, resources, development, or any other aspects of a student's home education. Homeschooling has been an option for Utah parents for decades, but the voucher program will now allow homeschoolers to receive taxpayer dollars to pay for books, curriculum, and computers. While some argue that parental choice should be the ultimate arbiter of what's best for their children, hello, others worry about the larger societal scale and the state's lack of ability to intervene if the problematic teachings are being spread. So now you have to ask the question, what do Utahns think are problematic teachings, right? So this is why we have free speech in this country and the government officials increasingly are interested in getting into your home, getting into your business, interviewing your kids, and the over they are salivating over this uh, over this possible more oversight. But it says overall parents in Utah are calling for more oversight and regulation in the homeschool community to prevent the spread of extremist and harmful ideology. I call foul. That's not why they're doing it. If that was the case, then why aren't we Uh, Why aren't we putting more oversight and regulation into the public school, which is absolutely involved in the genital mutilation of young children? Riddle me that. And so, you guys, listen to me. I'm going to sound the alarm again. Get these voucher programs away from homeschooling because all you're doing is inviting people who want to stranglehold homeschooling 
giving them the opportunity to do it. So there you go. That's all I have to say about that. All right, let's talk about homeschooling today. And I'm going to give you a couple of different ideas for homeschool methods. Uh, There's a lot of different ways that you can homeschool your kids out there. First, I'll just start with Heidi St. John. So I have been for a long, long time a huge fan of Charlotte Mason. You guys have heard me teach about her here before. Uh, She really incorporates nature in how she brings Uh, education to the forefront, lots of literature, very literature-rich education. And as someone who loves to read and has loved reading to my children for many, many years, this method resonated with me. And it's largely what I used for my children, for almost all of them. And so we did a lot of reading. We did a lot of notebooking and lap booking and, uh, and nature walks and things like that. And so uh, we did that. The first thing we did was traditional school meaning I just mimicked what I did in a classroom myself. And so I went to a private Christian school and we had, you know, the little wooden desks and my teacher had an apple on her desk and the the flags and the whole thing. When I first started homeschooling, that's what I did. I recreated a classroom in my home. But as you guys can imagine, we didn't stay in that space for very long. We ended up, where do you think? Around the kitchen table, we ended up outside, we ended up on the couch. Well, we spent most of our time either on the couch or on the kitchen table. And those desks simply were not conducive to an environment for learning within our home. And so I moved, eventually I moved away from the more structured approach that the traditional method of schooling my kids was providing. And the way that I did that was just through experience and confidence. It takes confidence to realize that you can homeschool your children. So I want to give you a little bit of a shot in the arm today. I'm going to quote from several really great websites And I'll link back to them in the show notes today because I want to encourage you to figure out your homeschool method, what works for you. And you got to understand what works one year might not work another year. What works for one child might not work for the other child. And so I always tell moms uh, when it comes to figuring out how you're going to homeschool your kids, the mom's style matters. And every homeschool is unique. Every mom is unique. Every child is unique. And so we want to take that into consideration and fold our children along the bend that God sends them to us with. And that is such an important part of what I'm trying to to convey to you, because it absolutely matters how we teach our children. It's not as important the, the method that we use, but the manner is much more important. So you could have like, you know, the most amazing homeschool method on the face of the earth. But if you're a jerk when you teach it, you're not going to be successful. So I'm going to give you a few ideas today and you guys can write some of these down and hopefully they'll be uh, encouraging for you. The first one is the one that almost everybody does and that is the school at home method. I think this is sort of this tried and true approach. It's traditional homeschooling. It's what I did when I first pulled my kids out of school and it's the one that the media I think really camps out on because it's the one that's the most uh, easy to understand. However, this one is when, so it's like when you, uh, you know, you follow an out a school at home approach, you get a boxed curriculum. It comes with textbooks, study schedules, grades, uh, record keeping. You know, some families use the school at home approach, but then they make their own lesson plans and get their own learning materials. But here's what I've discovered about this. The burnout rate for this is pretty high. So the advantage is that you know exactly what you're doing. Everything's laid out for you, the scope and sequence and the whole nine yards. And I think it's a great way to do it, especially if you're just starting out and you don't have a plan and you and you and, you know, maybe you're confused by, uh, you know, the new routine of homeschooling and not having your kids get on a school bus every day. And so in that regard, I will often tell parents this is a good place to start. So maybe you, you know, contact a Becca or Sunlight or whatever, and you get their boxed curriculum and you follow their schedule until you start to feel like, hey, I, I'm getting the hang of this. I can do it myself. That was what happened with me. I started off with uh, with an Abeka curriculum. And within about two and a half years, I was creating my own thing and doing what I felt was best for each of my children. And so I'm not anti-traditional uh, method approach to homeschooling, this traditional school at home. But I do know that there's a high rate of burnout. And it, and it can also require a whole heck of a lot more work because these these companies like Abeka, like Horizons, uh, any like Macmillan, any of these uh, workbook companies, they always put what I call B 
busy work in, and they're not very much fun for your kids. And so I'm going to list to a whole bunch of homeschool providers, but these me- this method absolutely will give you structure. So if it's structure that you're looking for, a school at home method might be for you. The opposite of the school at home method is what do you guys think? It's unschooling, right? Unschooling is this type of schooling also known as interest-led, uh, delight-driven. That's another word that I've heard for it. Child-led learning. Uh, I was a huge critic. I'll just be honest. I was a huge critic of unschooling when I first heard about it. I just thought, you know, you know, what parent in their right mind would unschool their kid? Your kids are going to be, you know, in my mind, I'm envisioning, you know, Tarzan. He's <laughs> swinging from your chandelier and the kids are running amok. But one year, I was privileged to meet an unschooling family, and I was blown away by how delightful these kids were, and a lot of it has to do with parenting. So just because you decide to unschool your kids does not mean that your kids are running amok all over your house, like I was envisioning, and they're Tarzan swinging from the chandeliers. But it really is, uh, instead, the children following their interests, um, they learn a lot like we do, kids do, right? So if if you put something interesting in front of your child and you give them all day to pursue it, maybe they're pursuing uh, building Legos or they're, they've got something that they're curious about, some music or whatever, uh, they are learning as they pursue that interest. Last week, our daughter, Sailor, our 12-year-old, who's taking an engineering class here at the Homeschool Resource Center, she was building a trebuchet with her dad. And then we came to the Homeschool Resource Center on Monday, and it was just so much fun to see the kids, you know, uh, launching foam balls all over the Resource Center from their trebuchets. I guarantee you some of the kids that, that were part of that engineering class, an interest has been sparked in them, and they are realizing, oh, I have this gift inside of me. It comes naturally. That's really the benefit of unschooling. And honestly, I would like to see more and more and more parents incorporate a heart of unschooling, even if you're doing traditional school at home, uh, incorporating that heart of homeschooling. Listen to this. Pat Montgomery, a homeschooling advisor for over 50 years and founder of the Culinera Private Day School, defined unschooling in a speech that she gave to parents at a homeschooling convention in 2001. Uh, The title of it was Unschooling Catch the Spirit. She said, I think first we have to define what unschooling is because it's different things to different people. For some, it's living and learning without any school at all. For others, it means not using prepackaged materials. For others, it's letting kids do whatever they want. For me, unschooling is taking responsibility for your own learning and learning and the learning of those around you. It's focused on the interests of the child. It's focusing on your own interests, your own abilities. It's learning in spurts and it's goofing off. It's not necessarily done in equal doses. And all of it, for me, spells freedom. Freedom to learn. Freedom is never given. It is taken. So unschoolers really embrace that that freedom and they believe strongly that learning happens naturally and effortlessly. And I have watched this in homeschooling uh, families who have decided to unschool over the years. And as a general rule, I think this is true. I think our kids come to us pre-programmed to learn. They are wired to learn. Our kids are like sponges, which is the reason that they're being targeted in our public school system right now. They're literally just taking in all of the things that are being uh, dished out to them. That is the advantage of this age of young child. And so I want to just Uh, encourage you, you know, before you say, well, that's a dumb idea, talk to some families who are actually doing it and see if you don't change your mind. Another method of homeschooling that's wildly popular is classical homeschooling. And this approach obviously has existed since the Middle Ages and it's really produced some of the greatest minds in history. The goal of the classical homeschool technique is to teach people how to learn for themselves. So the five tools of learning known as the trivium are reason, uh, record, research, relate, and rhetoric. So young kids begin with the preparing stage where they learn the three R's and the grammar stage is next. This emphasizes compositions, collections, and then dialectic stage where serious reading, studying, and research take place. So uh, there are, I know a lot of kids that are into homes, into the classical method of homeschooling. I don't hate it, but I also don't love it. I mean, this is sort of my critique of these of these particular methods. 
for my family, you know, our kids are writers and they are musicians. They are artists and creatives and entrepreneurs. And we did one year of classical schooling and it just about killed us. And I knew right then, wow, that is not going to work for our family, which was one of the reasons why I shifted my attention to the Charlotte Mason and to a literature based approach to learning, which worked a whole lot better for our kids. But I'm not knocking classical education. I'm just saying it didn't work for it didn't work for my kids. And what works for one family may not work for another one. uh, And that's okay. I think home educators who are uh, less concerned about whether students can handle iPads than they can grasp Plato might enjoy the classical education model because it really does emphasize emphasize truth and goodness and beauty. And a lot of people really love it. And so I just want to encourage you uh, check it out if that's something that you are interested in. Next thing that I want to go over is a method that you guys are all familiar with, and that is uh, the method of Montessori. And really, Montessori and Waldorf are sort of going hand in hand. The Montessori homeschool method, to me, this feels like, um, who's the painter? Bob, you remember? Remember Bob said, there, there, are, there are no mistakes. There are only happy accidents, right? The Montessori method emphasizes errorless learning, where children learn at their own pace and in a way that they can develop their own potential. The Montessori homeschool approach emphasizes beauty and quality and avoids things that are confusing or cluttered. There is a really sweet Montessori school right here in my neck of the woods that I follow on Instagram. I am obsessed with these people because she has this little class of like, I don't know, maybe eight kids max. And they all come in and it is like it's a throwback to the 1950s to watch this husband and wife team teaching these little kids every day is just a delight to the eyes to watch. And it's a very gentle approach to learning. And I've seen parents do this with uh, with their homeschooling and it's worked beautifully. Again, you this is something that you could absolutely bring into your classical education or you could you could put some of these methods certainly into a Charlotte Mason education, but it's just another way to look at it. The Waldorf method is a popular homeschool technique. Also, it's based on the work of Rudolf Steiner, and it stresses the importance of educating the whole child, body, mind, and spirit. When I first heard about the Waldorf method of homeschooling, I was like, isn't that parenting? I think it's parenting, right? Older children are taught to develop self-awareness, how to reason things out for themselves, And children in a Waldorf homeschool don't use standard textbooks. They create their own books. And so I love this. The Waldorf homeschooling method discourages the use of televisions, ding, and computers because they believe that they're bad for children's health and creativity. And you know what? They're not wrong. So uh, I I really like that. Uh, We didn't do that in our house. Again, I need a little more structure. Everyone is different. And that's one of the things I love about home education. It allows you to do what is right for your family and what is going to work for your unique children. The last method I want to talk about today is the unit study approach. Uh, This is probably next to Charlotte Mason. This is probably my favorite method. We have done this for years. It's when you take one subject or one, uh, let's say you take a book. It's easiest in a book. And for me, it was the easiest with missionary stories, with biographies that you guys have heard me talk about, you know, a million times over the years here at the show. I would take one missionary story. So let's say I'm going to study Hudson Taylor. So we're going to spend the month of April and we're going to read the story of Hudson Taylor. And who do you, what, what's the country that we're going to study? We're going to study China. We're going to study the era that Hudson Taylor lived in. We're going to learn about the Chinese people. Maybe we're going to learn to speak a little bit of Mandarin. Uh, We're going to find out what was happening in the United States when Hudson Taylor was called overseas to China. We have had such um, a wonderful experience using unit studies in our home because it basically takes one topic. In this case, it's a book. Uh, In my case, typically it was a biography. And then we just pull every academic opportunity out of that book that we possibly can. And we're making maps of China and we're doing timelines, uh, maybe from the time that Hudson Taylor lived to when he died, that, that, that space that he lived, we're going to see what was happening around the world. It gives the kids um, a frame of reference. But what's really great about using a story and building a homeschool curriculum around it is that you can get your children 
um, invested in what they're learning. And it's the same reason that Jesus used parables, right? Because he knew that if you can be emotionally invested in a story, you're going to remember what you've been taught. Same thing is true for unit studies. And so they're going to incorporate, you know, the basic things. Uh, it's going to cover reading, writing, math, science, social study, arts. They're adaptable to all different skill levels, which is how it works so beautifully for our multiple ages in our family. And we just streamline our our schedule at home to make it work. And I let my kids just explore the uh, the topic at their ability level. So I would give them some assignments. We would have assignments that we shared as a family and then things that I would have different kids do uh, who, depending on what age they were. So that's my very, very favorite method. It's the unit study approach. Uh, you guys should check it out. I'll link back to it in the show notes today. But if you want to begin to figure out what it is that you want to do, and if you're, if you're thinking about pulling your kids out or you're just pulling them out, I would encourage you very strongly to take time off and just enjoy your kids. Read books together. You know, start building your family library. We got a lot of our books at garage sales and um, library clearances. I mean, the libraries are getting rid of all the good books, so you guys can go get the good books, and then you won't have to go back to the library. <laughs> it's a great idea. Anyway, take time to sort of deprogram yourself. Is homeschooling is not like public school. It is more life-giving. It takes more of your time, but you are going to get out of it so much more than you ever dreamed that you could just by putting in an effort with your children. I'm telling you what, it's going to reap dividends for you that are going to last a lifetime. So I've written on this topic extensively. I'll link back to some of those things in the show notes today and to other articles that I think are worth reading around the internet. Uh, pray about it, you guys. Yesterday, we were talking about decision-making and the will of God. This is one of those things. If your heart is being stirred, ask the Lord to show you what he has for your kids and then jump in and see if God doesn't do something amazing. Uh, I have written a book all about how to fit your size 16 day into a size 10. And you can find that at HeidiStJohn.com. Just click on the store or anywhere that books are sold. And if you're interested in reading my journey in motherhood, please find my book, Becoming Mom Strong, How to Fight with All That's in You for Your Family and Your Faith available everywhere books are sold. Thank you guys for listening. I hope this was encouraging and informative and I will see you back here tomorrow. Don't forget, I'm on my way to Round Rock right now. So come out and see me at the, at the resort this weekend. You're gonna love it. Bring your kids, let them swim. Do something for your family. This is an investment that you can make that you will not be sorry that you did. I hope you'll come out and say hello and that God richly blesses you guys this weekend. All right, have a great day. I will see you back here again, right here at the intersection of faith.